Hi, my name is Michaela, and this is your Epiphany in a Minute. Our Epiphany Lutheran School offers a caring and nurturing environment centered on biblical values for all students 18 months through 8th grade. We are looking forward to another fantastic year of making new friends, learning, and having fun. To schedule a tour of our school, contact the people on the screen or visit our website at epiphanylutheranschool.org. Join us for the fourth week of our In View of God's Mercy series for Lent. In this service, we understand that we are given the grace to treat one another within the communities God has placed us in, as Christ has cared for us in his love and mercy. We hope you'll join us next Wednesday night at 7 p.m. One more announcement. Because it's coming up to Holy Week, we're having an Easter egg hunt. And we're really trying to reach our community. And this is something we advertise to our community over at Owens Elementary in that area, that we have this. And so we got lots of eggs, but the one thing we're missing is not the kids, not the eggs. What do you think it is? Volunteers. Oh, you guys are so good. You got, you got, I, I was wondering what it Volunteers. And so we would love to have some volunteers. It's going to be on April 16th. That's what the need is from 10 to 12, it's only two hours. But um, someone already blessed us with a Thrivent card with this, to do this, to get all the stuff, so we've been blessed. It's not costing us anything other than time. And what a great opportunity to be with the kids. I'll be here for sure, making sure that, that we're accessible and available, but if you can do that, please contact Beth Hickson. Get on, the, get on the weekly newsletter, and you can register online, or just get in touch with Beth Hickson, and that would be great. But we need people, and this is something a lot of people, you might, even if it's to pick up the eggs afterward, you know, the, the plastic pieces, or if it's just to set them out or whatever, whatever you can do to help. I think this is a really cool thing. So, if Beth says I didn't do a good job on that announcement, I don't know what is. With that, let us rise and let us begin our worship.
Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. And cleanse me from my sin. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Merciful Father, we beg you, O Lord, to have mercy upon us sinners. Though we deserve nothing of your kindness, deliver us according to the mercy you have promised in your Son, Jesus Christ, and restore us as your own sons and daughters. Forgive us all our sins, create in us a new contrite hearts, and instill in us the will and desire for all that is good and right and true. Make us to know your will and grant us your Holy Spirit that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As a call and ordained servant of the word, it is my privilege, it is my honor to announce to you that your sins are forgiven. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Oh, what do we got here? <laughs> oh, may the Lord who has begun this good work in us bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I read it silently to myself, for sure. <laughs> All right. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, your mercies are new every morning, and though we deserve only punishment, you instead receive us as your children and provide for all our needs of body and soul. Grant that we may heartily acknowledge your merciful goodness, give thanks for all your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Congregation may be seated for the readings from God's Word. The Old Testament reading comes from the fifth chapter of Isaiah, verses 1 through 12. You will say in that day, I will give thanks to you, O Lord, for though you were angry with me, your anger turned away, that you might comfort me. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and will not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. With joy, you will draw water from the wells of salvation, and you will say in that day, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name and make known his deeds among the peoples. Proclaim his name as exalted. Sing praises to the Lord, for he has done gloriously. Let, us, let this be made known in all the earth. Shout and sing for joy, O inhabitant of Zion. For great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle lesson comes from the fifth chapter of 2 Corinthians, verses 16 to 21. From now on, therefore, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh, we regard him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, a new has come. All this is from God, 
who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. This is the word of the Lord. St. Luke, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to hear Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes grumbled, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. There was a man who had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of property that is coming to me. And he divided the property between them. Not many days later, the younger son gathered all he had and took a journey into a far country, and there he squandered his property in reckless living. And when he had spent everything, a severe famine arose in the country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him into the fields to feed pigs. And he was longing to be fed, even with the paws of the pigs ate, and no one gave him, however, anything. And when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have more than enough bread? But here I am perishing with hunger. I will arise and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt compassion and ran and embraced him and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worried to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring quickly the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet, and bring the fattened calf and kill it, and let us eat and celebrate. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Now his older son was in the field, and as he came and drew near to the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said to him, your brother has come, and your father has killed the fattened calf, because he has received him back safe and sound. But the older son was angry, and he refused to go in. His father came out and entreated him, but he answered his father, look, these many years I have served you, and I never disobeyed your command. Yet you never gave me a young goat that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came, not my brother, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fattened calf for him. And he said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. It is fitting to celebrate and be glad, for this your brother was dead and is alive. He was lost and is found. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Congregation may be seated for this hymn, Our Father We Have Wandered.
Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. A blessed fourth Sunday in Lent to you all in Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, we are midway through Lent. The readings today are filled with joy in our Lord Jesus Christ. It is all availing sacrifice on the cross for our salvation and the salvation of the whole world. In the old Latin lectionaries, this Sunday was called Litari, which means to rejoice. And that's exactly what we are doing today as we focus on 2 Corinthians 5, 16 to 21. Please follow along as I read. From now on, therefore, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh, we regard him no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled to himself, us to himself, and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Please pray with me. <coughs> Lord Jesus, you are our all in all. You are everything to us. In you, we have life and salvation. Apart from you, there is no good thing. We are new creations in you, Christ Jesus, made brand new through your powerful word, working through the sacrament of holy baptism. We were once your enemies, dead in sin, and in rebellion to the will of our Heavenly Father. By your blood shed on the cross, you have paid for every one of our sins. Your death has become our death, that by your resurrection, we have received forgiveness of all of our sins, life and salvation, through your powerful word of life in the gospel. In repentance and faith, you have turned us back to you in reconciliation. You have called us friends and have made us your sisters and brothers by your blood. You have even given us the ministry of reconciliation and have sent us out as your ambassadors to share the good news of your salvation and to implore others to be reconciled to the Father through you, Christ Jesus and receive you by faith in the power of your Holy Spirit. All this is true, because you who knew no sin became sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God. How amazing this all is, that we should become new creations in Christ, reconciled to God through Christ, and been given an ambassadorship to share your reconciling and saving love with all people now. This we pray in your life-giving name, Jesus, in the powerful name of your Holy Spirit, to the Father's glory, and all God's children say, Amen. 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 Well, these words, you know, it, I'm, I'm kind of chuckling to myself. I'm having difficulties with my mic here. And Keith was asking me beforehand, did I want to switch the, the mic out because I have problems with this one. Of course, here it is, it's having me problems today, so here we go. <laughs> These words of Paul were written to believers who were, regular, who were regular people. They were regular people, sinner saints, living in the tension of the now and the not yet. Now I'm saved, and I'm not yet perfected in Christ Jesus. They were living in this fallen world with all the pressures to conform to a worldly point of view. Amid all that was going on in their day with the stresses and strains of life. In other words, they were human messes. You like that word? Human messes. That's what they were. When we describe them like that, they sound pretty much like you and me. We are regular people. We are living in the tension of the now and the not yet. Now we are saved and we are not yet perfected in Christ Jesus. We are living in this fallen world with all the pressures to conform to a worldly point of view 
amid all that is going on in our day with the stresses and strains of this life. And we are human messes too. Life is messy, incomplete. Something's always on the horizon to add to the mess. That is why it is so good to hear the words of Paul when he writes, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. The old has passed away, behold, the new has come. Now we are new creations in Christ Jesus. Now by the power of the word, working through the sacrament of holy baptism, we are made brand new in the gift of forgiveness and faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. We have been placed into Christ Jesus. The Holy Spirit has created faith in our hearts through the word and through the sacrament, which leads us to rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Would you say that with me? Rejoice in the Lord always. I will again I say rejoice. What amazing words those are, that we can rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in what we're reading right now on this Lytari Sunday. Well, what has happened? What has taken place that has brought this new reality into to being for us human messes? What's happened? We have received reconciliation with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Reconciliation. What is reconciliation anyway? Reconciliation is when you're turned away and you're turned back. Simply as that. Turned away, turned back. That's what it is. Repentance is a 180 degree turn, turn this way. Here we go. We have received reconciliation with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Paul continues writing, all this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them. Before we knew Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we were dead people walking around in our trespasses and sins. In fact, this was ever so since the first Adam, sin of Adam in the Garden of Eden. And this is the condition of all who have yet to receive the gift of faith by the power of the Holy Spirit. God takes the initiative. The Lord does what we can never do. The Lord promised the Savior to be born and given to the world. As Jesus says in John 3, 16 and 17, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not, did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. For God so loved the world. For God so loved you and me. For God so loved each one of us that he sent Jesus. And we have been reconciled, brought back to God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Reconciliation, what a powerful word. Through Jesus Christ, we have been restored and renewed to a face-to-face -face relationship with God, our Heavenly Father. Now, notice how I was doing that before. I wasn't doing both hands away and turning. I was having one hand always this way and one hand turned away, okay? See, the Father was always turned toward us. He's never changed his mind. You know, back, in, back when he created the world, he said good every day, and then he said very good. He's never changed his opinion, his decision on what he made when he first created the world, when he first created humans, when he first created you and me. We have always been very good in his sight. And therefore, when he promised to send us a savior, he had a choice to make. A choice of either wiping the world out or sending the savior. That's what it was. He chose to send his son. He chose to send Jesus for us. And therefore, he was always turned toward us in love and in kindness. Even when he was, you know, angry about our sin, even when he was in judgment on sin, that was all placed on Christ. So that's what it's all about. The Father always turned toward us sending Jesus. We're the ones who had to be turned around, turned back to the Lord by the working of the Holy Spirit in word and faith. What has the Lord done to and through Jesus specifically to make our reconciliation a reality? God, our Heavenly Father, made Jesus 
to be sin, who knew no sin? Now, I, I spent several days just pondering this whole concept of Jesus being sin for us. He knew no sin. He was perfect. He was absolutely perfect. And yet, and yet he took on our sin. What this means was Jesus was nailed to the cross. He hung there carrying all our sins, every one of them, every single one of them, and the world's sins, every single one of them, for every person who has lived who is living now or will live till kingdom come, Jesus took on all our sins. God made Jesus to be sin who knew no sin so that his death was truly substitutionary once and for all. He took it in our place. He didn't need to for himself, but he did it for us. He did it for all of us, every last one of us. And then he cried out and it's finished right before he died. Jesus died the death we deserved. His de he died in our place. He rose again on the third day in the Father's complete approval. Complete approval. The magnitude of this approval is seen in the second part of verse 21. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. We by faith have been declared righteous in God's sight, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, when the Lord looks at us, he only sees us in Jesus because he has forgiven us our sins and remembers them no more. Through the Holy Spirit, working through the word and sacraments, we begin to think the things of God and to speak the things of God in Christ Jesus and the reconciliation we have received through Christ. Think about that just for a second. Just, just. Hold it right there. That in the Holy Spirit, we get to think the things of God and to speak the things of God. That's amazing. And it's not just memorize the scripture and then quote it and say it. It's actually say it with the meaning in your heart. Say it with what it has impacted you. Say it with all that you are. That you get to say, Jesus loves me that you get to say, Jesus loves you, that you get to say, Jesus loves our world. This is an amazing thing. We have been entrusted with the message of reconciliation by God through Jesus Christ. The Lord has made us his ambassadors through Christ, God making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. Well, you know, I kept wanting to Put the prodigal son in here somewhere, you know. And so I decided, well, do I say it now or do I not even say it? So I'm going to say it. He was coming back. He had his whole rehearsal. And we know from last Sunday's wonderful sermon, <laughs> uh, the well, it was. It was a wonderful <laughs> sermon. You know? We know, we know that the father was waiting for him to come, saw him before he saw him, and ran to him and embraced him and just surrounded him with love. Well, that's how the Lord has done that for each one of us. So the reconciliation of God is full and complete in Christ. It really is. But then you get to the older brother, and you get to... Yeah, well, did he reconcile himself or not? Well, then I got to thinking about my own situation, my own family, my own relationships, my own sin, my own whatever. And, uh, and I got to thinking how my life is incomplete. My life is incomplete. There are people I need to repent of sin to, I'm sure. There are people who I need to reach out to just to call them back into my relationships because of Jesus. And I'm sure that's also the same way for you, that there is incompleteness in your life, that you are not fully there yet. We're human messes. We really are, aren't we? We are saved now, and we're not yet perfected. And we're not yet perfected in all our relationships. 
Imagine what this church would be like if we all treated each other as a new creation in Christ. Wow. I mean, this would be heaven on earth, right? It really would be. Well, we don't, but that doesn't mean we can't. Now now we can in Jesus. We can look at each other, and before we, we say that biting word, before we say that angry word, before we do this or that, that's less than what we are in Jesus. Just stop, pause, put it in, and in, in, just put it in pause a second and think. You're a new creation in Christ. I'm a new creation in Christ. We are all new creations in Christ. And the old has passed away. Sure, we will die. Yes, that will happen sooner or later. But what will happen after that? The resurrection. What will happen after that? Well, we, we go to the Lord. We'll be in heaven, right? And then we receive our new bodies when Jesus comes again. Then we receive a new and perfect life in Christ when Jesus comes again. So yes, we are all, we are all that way. We are all in a mess right now. But that doesn't mean we can't share Jesus with our hearts and with our souls. We can say what a difference he's already made in our lives. We can say what he has done for us in this salvation. So the Lord, amazingly, has given us an ambassadorship. We are his direct representatives to share this with others, to share this with people now. And he has given us his word, his word, in his word, the book, the Bible. He has given us his word so that we can know what to say and how to say it. Well, this is a message we need to hear daily as we come to the Lord in faith and forgiveness that we have been reconciled. We have been turned back to the Lord. And because he has turned us back to him, he has also given us opportunity to turn back to each other. Now we get to all turn back. We all get to turn back to Jesus. We all get to turn back to each other in Christ. We all get to do this together. What an opportunity every day. What an opportunity to share the love of the Lord Jesus Christ. So today let us rejoice. Truly rejoice. Rejoice in the reconciliation of Jesus Christ, who for us, won for us all on the cross. Amen. Please pray with me. Lord Jesus, thank you for carrying the full load of the world's sins when you went to the cross. Thank you for carrying the full load of my sins and all our sins on the cross. Thank you for the forgiveness of all of our sins paid for by the sacrifice of your blood shed on the cross. Thank you for the reconciliation your sacrifice effected with our Heavenly Father, that by your grace we may know and trust in you for salvation in all things and through all things. And thank you for your Holy Spirit and the message of reconciliation we have received to share with others still needing to hear you, still needing to know you, still needing to experience your grace, your love, and your mercy. Lord, you have given us this beautiful gift of faith, hope, and life. It is our joy, Lord, to share. So bless us to be a blessing to others. This we pray in your wonderful name, Jesus, to the Father's glory and the power of your Holy Spirit, and all God's children say, Amen. Amen. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, shall keep and guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, unto life everlasting. Amen. 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 Let's stand now and say together our confession of faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Together we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified. Father Almighty, from there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit.
of Zion, bring out your joy, for the Great One in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. It is prayer time at Epiphany. In our prayers, we have a, a few things. One Thanksgiving I see here for sure, and that's for Matt Thornton. Um, where we praise the Lord. He had a successful procedure to remove a block from his bile duct this past Tuesday, and he's feeling much better. He was in a lot of pain, and so we thank God for that. We have some surgeries coming up for Fred Wamhoff and Ann Gradwall. We pray that God heals them and brings the right people to help them in the healing. We pray for Melanie Leland, Pastor Leland's wife, who was getting her, uh, vascular, her vascular surgery on her right carotid artery on Thursday, March 31st. So we're glad to hear that. And then there's uh, Rick Mallon's sister, Claire, and we pray that she heals. She's in a hospital in Michigan with an infection, and they're trying to figure out where it is and what's going on. We ask the Lord to be with the Underwood family. Uh, Ken's mom, Dolores, was laid to rest yesterday, and and we ask the Lord to strengthen the family during this time especially. And for Donna Mitschke, she's, uh, she's continues to be in Brookdale near Willowbrook Mall, and she is making progress, so we're glad to hear that. Let us rise for this time of prayer. <coughs> As prodigals, we come into the arms of our Heavenly Father, waiting even more for us to pray than we are to petition His mercy. Heavenly Father, we have all been one with Adam in the rebellion of our stubborn wills and in suffering the consequences of sin with its death. Grant us grace that we may return to you with humble hearts and rejoice in your forgiveness so that our hearts may be at peace and we may be reconciled from our guilt, shame, and despair. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Blessed Lord, in baptism you made us anew. Raising us, raising up from the water a new person created in Christ Jesus for good works. Give us the will and desire to do what is good, right, and pleasing in your sight. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Mighty God, deliver the nations from violence and war, and teach us generosity, compassion, and the path of peace. Bless our president, Congress, governor, legislature, 
and all who make, administer, and judge your laws. Bless also those who labor for peace and justice, even at the peril of their own lives. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful God, deliver us from rebellion and bitterness, that we not only find a home in your mercy, but show forth your grace, forgiveness, and joy to all those around us. Bless the missionary and church planter as they bring your saving word to those who have not heard it, and plant congregations for your people to gather around your word and table. Lord, in your mercy. Compassionate Father, you know our needs even before we ask, but still we cry to you on behalf of all the sick and those who suffer, especially those we named earlier and those we name in our hearts at this time. Give them healing in accordance with your will, grace to endure their affliction, and peace in the hour of death. Lord, in your mercy. Kindly, Father, you sent forth your Son into our death that that what he has accomplished by his suffering and death you have given to us freely in this holy sacrament. Grant that we, with repentance and faith, come forth from the table every time we go, receiving his body and blood for the forgiveness of our sins, for the strengthening of our faith. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our O blessed Lord, your mercies are daily new, and with fresh goodness you replenish the earth. Give us wisdom to use well all your resources, and grant us giving hearts that we share with those in need all that you have given in abundance. Receive also these tithes and offerings, signs of our faith and symbols of our thanksgiving. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our And one additional prayer is that our congregation is prepared for Easter as we try to bring all the good things that we want to share about Jesus to our community. Help us do very well in that and be faithful in that. O Lord, remember the faithful who have gone before us. We ask you to keep us by your grace through the days to come, that we not be lost to you again, but kept in faith now until the day of the resurrection of the dead, when we shall join the saints in glory in your presence forevermore. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. We pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thy is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Congregation may be seated for our sending hymn. 